Thank you very much. Uh, I'm really, really happy to uh, come here um, and then thank you for the invitation. Um, I, I came to here in uh, in March uh, visiting Pete Turner and, um, and um, that day somehow it snowed and then uh, the university was closed. So I came here after and then didn't <laughs> manage to talk. So now it's really, really sunny and very, very nice. And, uh, uh, this is my revenge for the uh, kind of, you know, uh, Bristol. Anyway, uh, of course, everybody in here is very familiar, and, and I think um, I mean we start from the long time, and we starting from the fire. The, the, the human um, history is something like we try to find out, like not just the passively uh, accept nature, but we wanted to develop this manipulating the nature. And of course, these for manipulation, low physics limits, and how we can manipulate the world, and then, and then of course, a heat engine, electricity, electronics, and then of course, this future is uh, quantum, as, as all of us we know. And this, what I think, um, uh, so now this, everything we can try to do is uh, manipulate in the level of quantum. What uh, we can do is um, is actually described by quantum computers. So. Um, Quantum computer is the things, of course, solving lots of computation problems. But in my opinion, it is not just uh, solving classical uh, sol solving classical problem, computation problem. But it's 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 actually uh, describe the our full power of manipulating um, uh, nature, quantum nature, quantum uh, world. So. Um, so the application side is quantum computer, of course, this information processing we can use, or of course, this, uh, this meteorology, or communication, cryptography, lots of things. And then on the other hand, um, I On the other hand, I think uh, it's a quantum computer is used for understanding uh, our world, quantum, uh, our physics or universe or something, and uh, not this like uh, um, passive way, but our and we can manipulate this world depending on what we are doing. Like uh, uh, we have conditional operation we can do and then manipulation. So some some word in quantum world with this if command exists. And of course, this um, physics um, uh, it would give uh, the law of physics gives gives this limitation, and then what is we can do is quantum manipulation. Uh, manipulation, and how they are different from classical world is maybe maybe the most interesting part. So my kind of image of quantum processing is everything in quantum, and then we can kind of transform quantum system into another quantum. System. I mean quantum system, quantum system can be our quantum states or maybe become quantum system with some Hamiltonian which uh, is a quantum uh, evolution dynamical system. So quantum information processing, uh, quantum information I mean quantum states and dynamics and uh, we can process quantum states and dynamics without going out to the classical world, everything in quantum. So we can transforming A to B and, and uh, in a fully quantum power allowed in quantum mechanics. This is uh, our image of a quantum computer. So yeah, so the physical system can be given. So it's not the classical data, but the quantum system itself is given. And we can kind of connect to quantum computer. And we can manipulate directly quantum system. That is what we want to do. So I would like to talk about uh, two applications. One is an application to, uh, to perform on this um, measurement of uh, Hamiltonian system with the uh, projective measurement of energy. And another one is like how this uh, quantum computer can be uh, useful for understanding the really foundation part of uh, quantum mechanics. So we're first off from um, this projective measurement of energy. And then uh, this was like this. So what, uh, of course, this um, uh, what we all learn in quantum mechanics, this quantum system is described by Hamiltonian, and then the Hamiltonian is the eigenvalue and eigenstates, and the systems are given by density matrix, and then the expectation variance is given like this. But then in quantum mechanics, because we can manipulate, we can uh, manipulate in quantum world, we can perform this quantum measurement, one-shot measurement, and particularly this predictive measurement of energy would be our projector onto the eigenstate of energy. Right. 
So, and then this, this projective measurement energy is a really um, interesting thing, I mean, because it's um, transforming any state into the eigenstate of, uh, of the Hamiltonian system. So we consider the task, so given a uh, system, which we don't know what it is, Hamiltonian is completely unknown, unless, uh, uh, although these um, uh, strengths of the Hamiltonian, so energy range would be kind of bounded. And then we wanted to perform uh, uh, this projective measurement of men uh, energy. So system H is unknown, and of course, unknown Hamiltonian, we don't know how to uh, diagonalize. But we want to perform this. And of course, the trivial way is a brute force method. First, we're finding out what is a system. I mean, finding out what the Hamiltonian the system, and then, then try to uh, calculate these this matrices of the Hamiltonian, diagonalizational matrix to the Hamiltonian. And then somehow we kind of construct this, the projection uh, quantum circuit to uh, map this computational basis to eigenstates. And of course, this, it's all this time, it's depend on the di uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, dimension dependent. And the dimension, the two to power n, so exponential, um, a lot of resource required. <coughs> but um, our task is not finding out what Hamiltonian is, but we just wanted to project Hamiltonian. And then, so we wanted to try not to go outside the uh, quantum world, but wanted to do our job, everything as much as possible inside quantum mechanics and qu inside quantum uh, computer. So we somehow uh, connect um, this target system to be measured into quantum computer by some system independence interaction and uh, running quantum algorithm on the quantum computer to uh, project this quantum uh, PM, uh, this projective measurement to energy. That is what um, we try to find out. So actually this, this is kind of, our, the, this is the algorithm we, we kind of found, but this is not the algorithm we find in, in, in fact, this phase estimation algorithm, the famous phase estimation algorithm it is itself, it's a projective, the algorithm use, you can be used for the algorithm for projective measurement of energy. So this is like, in, uh, for phase estimation, you wanted to know this, what is the value of the phase. So you wanted to, uh, this, this gives this value of uh, uh, eigenvalues. But um, after getting the eigenvalue, the state, if we, we start, if we put this eigenstate into the left, eigenstate come out. But if we put some unknown state, um, the, the eigenvalue, correspond to the uh, eigenstate, correspond to the eigenvariable of your, your measurement result come out. So it is actually, the, uh, this PME, uh, this uh, phase estimation algorithm is actually phase uh, uh, projected measurement of energy. The problem here is for, for this algorithm, uh, we need this control unitary T. The unitary T in <coughs> our case, it's Hamiltonian dynamics, so it's E to minus IHT. And the problem here is uh, how to obtain this control UT operation out from the R system evolving E to minus I A T. It is well known um, without knowing any eigen uh, state or eigen basis, uh, eigen state, <coughs> this controlization is not possible. Uh, of course, in optical case system, uh, we always have some vacuum. And vacuum is um, known eigenstate. So for the optical system, this controlization is possible. Therefore, this um, PME that is, is possible. But if it's not optical system, uh, it is not possible. Uh, actually, there, there is ever proof. So what, how do we do is that we try to find out, we find out some algorithm to approximate this, this contrarization for this Hamiltonian dynamic system. And how do we do is actually this kind of interesting thing is, um, this is very simple algorithm. So we need some kind of control swap inserted into uh, our Hamiltonian system, into some kind of piece slice of a Hamiltonian dynamics. And this, and, then, and, and using this ancilla system, which is prepared in, in the complete mixed state and then use uh, some kind of randomization. It's actually uh, simulate uh, up to whichever the order you like to uh, uh, you like in uh, this com 
control unitary can be simulated. And of course, this, this will be approximation <coughs> depend on uh, how much slice we can put. That means how much control uh, swap operation we need to insert frequently would be decided, also decided by the another algorithm uh, like this. It's almost similar, but uh, like this. An interesting thing here is um, this, this is DQC1 on, uh, one of the DQC1 algorithm to estimate this um, trace of unitary operation. Um, it can be done without uh, controlization. So, um, so this is algorithm, but um, algorithm is something like we just say algorithm that's done. Uh, gets through this kind of um, analysis, we kind of develop the idea of higher order quantum operations which is something we wanted to transform dynamics to another dynamics. For the control validation case, it is un unitary evolution due to the Hamiltonian dynamics into control unitary <coughs> evolution. And uh, we are working on this, uh, what is the quantum mechanically allowed these kind of transformation? And usually there are lots of lots of noble theorem. Quantum mechanics does not allow arbitrary function to implement, but um, uh, by using this, um, Hamiltonian property, which have a, uh, you can take whichever square root or something. Uh, we can sometimes we can dodge the nature of noble theorem for this higher order quantum computation. Right. Um, how much do we have? Oh, about ten minutes. Ten minutes. <laughs> okay. So, uh, okay. Right. So um, another thing we are, we recently found is this um, um, given unknown unitary, we can implement a, a conjugation of unitary uh, without knowing what unitary is. That can be possible. And then also uh, this un inverse of unitary can be done uh, in uh, high probability. That is possible. Right. So another thing is a bit more foundation side. And this is kind of sounds more weird, but um, uh, Quantum computer can be used for analyzing physics in the sense of the how this command would uh, this if command exists in the, uh, that would be interesting. So in my our kind of uh, uh, view of quantum uh, computer and the inside quantum computer programming of quantum computer is made of a command. It, it's all the combination of transformations the gate operation or anything. It's always a combination transformation. And then general um, command, if command, what we say would be a maybe depending on some classical value x, you perform some operation m. And m can be unitary CPT, CPTP map, or uh, in general, it can be instrument. So it's <coughs> the measurement. And um, we try to think about, so every computation may be the combination of these com commands. And then how the commands will be are distributed in space and time will tell the whole operation. And then, of course, every operation can be written in space and time kind of picture. Time is this like uh, order of commands. And space would be our, the tensor product structure of uh, uh, Hilbert space. Therefore, it's a one qubit, the more number of qubits. So teleportation can be written in this piece of command, and then this arrow means this time or causal order, we can say. So by using this, we can analyze uh, this like a distributed quantum computation like this. So uh, what is the resource we need uh, between the party kind of thing. Uh, so for example, like uh, uh, if Alice and Bob try to evaluate some uh, global quantum operation. Uh, this can be written uh, by uh, this LOC uh, entanglement assisted LOCC scheme. That is, that means um, all the communication between Alice and Bob are classical, but uh, start with um, shared entanglement. Right. So in LOCC, of course, communication is like uh, Alice do some measurement, they depend on the measurement outcome, both do something, so it's everything is nicely causally related. Right. And then um, we wanted to know about this like a uh, different place is connected by entanglement and how entanglement in global op operation is um, like uh, contribute for this 
distributed uh, space-time calculation scenario, and then how this, especially for the causal order. So uh, we kind of focus on the, the class of global operation called separable maps. Separable maps, mathematically written like this, A and B perform some kind of measurement um, on the uh, on some uh, shared state uh, A B row A B, and then, then they got this 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 described this somehow they got this correlated outcome like this, and the separable operation is uh, introduced for analyzing like often introduced for uh, analyzing LOCC scheme, which is very difficult to uh, analyze. But this is have a much more simpler mathematical formula, and um, uh, it is easy to analyze. So actually, it is well known that LO separable operations are larger than LOCC plus. And this, this gap is um, uh, shown by some particular like, examples. But um, the difference between LOCC and SEP has not been very fully understood. And um, um, yeah, and an operational meaning of so SEP, separable operation is defined in very mathematical sense. So what, what an operational meaning was not very uh, clear. So what we found is uh, actually the separable operation have uh, operational meaning if we kind of accept some kind of classical communication without causal order, so not following the causal order. Every um, separable maps uh, written by, so separable maps is a global operation. It looks like it can be done individually by Alice and Bob, but it requires amount of some entanglement uh, <coughs> like sh to start with if you wanted to do by LOCC. So LOC entanglement assisted LOCC. Uh, and then if we kind of assume this, there is no entanglement, uh, but still we can do this separable operation, this means um, this classical communication part is not uh, causally ordered. Causa so it's, it's connected by a classical communication without uh, causal order. Right. Okay, sorry, going back. To do that, we kind of uh, introduce kind of um, CC, so classical communication CC, but we have the superpowered classical communication CC star, which is um, represented by this conditional pro probability distribution connecting this uh, Alice's operation and Bob's operation outcomes, the classical outcome and classical in income, how they are kind of rely, rely each other. And these are this particular, um, some of the particular the conditional probability distribution, we cannot rewrite things in terms of a uh, causary order, this uh, Alice Bob kind of uh, uh, Alice Bob causary order communication. So by using the idea of quantum computer and distributed quantum computation and analyzing something, we kind of uh, learn uh, something about this physics. Um, so what we learn is like, um, so separable operation, the mathematical form of this particular global operation, can be uh, implemented by uh, entanglement assisted, causally ordered classical communication. And then actually, it, I didn't talk here, but then if depending on this like classical communication have one way or two way, um, this requirement entanglement resource may be, uh, it is actually different. Anyway, so separable operation required quantum uh, entanglement plus classical communication, but it can be all, uh, it can, it, it's, they are always written by the, without uh, entanglement, but this, this entanglement uh, is now, uh, in the role of entanglement is now um, given by this classical communication without causal order. And, but this with classical communication without causal order cannot be, cannot be used uh, for um, communication into the past, nor creating entanglement, this kind of thing. Right, so, so for summarize, um, uh, we can see this uh, two applications of a quantum computer and uh, for analyzing quantum systems. The first mm -hmm. one is that we can uh, perform um, some um, uh, the operation without knowing what it is, uh, much of the things. And then 
this so this is some, somehow like uh, unknown Hamiltonian so how much we can do uh, our quantum manipulation of quantum system without extracting classical information about it would be our, uh, one of the uh, ideas. I think I, the Elham's talk maybe also somewhat related without knowing what it is, and then, but you wanted to apply operations, so it would be very nice to think about that some cryptographic possibility. And this higher order quantum operation is something um, not well explored yet. Um, what, what kind of transformation between map is allowed in uh, quantum mechanics and how we can dodge um, something noble theorem can be dodged by adding some extra resource. That would be an uh, interesting thing. Right. And then processing quantum system without extracting unnecessary classical information. This will be generally uh, very important, I think, for using quantum computation for manipulating quantum systems. And this, the second half, um, it is a, a very foundation side, maybe, but um, uh, maybe this, this would tell uh, another new type of the role of entanglement. Uh, when an entanglement is coming together with classical communication, maybe we have some power to somehow dodge this, the restriction of the cause for classical communication. So that's all. Okay, two questions from here, please. So, so about your causal ordering, right? As, as I understand you correctly, as, as I understand you correctly, um, so there is no problem with causality in your last section of your talk, right? Um, so it's, it's just the entanglement helps you. So if you would not have entanglement, that you would do, do like violate causality, right? Right, right. So I, I really uh, want some experimentaries performing this separable operation because they can claim that they've successfully done somebody not uh, believing for entanglement. If, okay, the local quantum system operation that works, and, and then if, but I don't believe quantum uh, and existed the quantum entanglement between the deep and love, then. The, if you manage to do this sub-separable operation, that means you are doing this weird causal, not the ordered communication. That is the only possibility, right? If, if local quantum mechanics is correct, but don't admit, like, don't, uh, yeah, so some kind of Einstein kind of people have to admit this real weird causal order uh, happen. If you manage to implement the separable operation, so the real word, because we have entanglement, so that's no problem. This entanglement plus causally ordered stuff is we can what we can implement. But if you insist no entanglement, then you somehow manage to dodge this, this no causal plastic. Is there another question like that? So how does the CC star uh, thing relate to signaling faster than light, for example? It cannot use, it, it's a correlation. So it cannot uh, uh, mean, because um, it, is, it, is, it looks maybe somebody familiar with the process metrics, it looks similar, it looks very similar to them, but it's actually not. This, this uh, separable operation is uh, only possible for particular measurement. So not every, like, uh, the pl you, you cannot plug in every operation. And this, if you particular um, measurement outcome, it's, it's sort of it's a coincidence, but it cannot be uh, sent to uh, information. Information, you, 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 can, you have to be able to choose some information, right? So it's not a correlation, but uh, it's a to get the communication, this, this choice of input, that is not possible in this case. 